When the bite gets tough, fishing a young tube slow can't be beat. Look at that tank. This thing is so freaking thick. So guys, I want to talk to you quick about finesse fishing, slowing down, it's painful sometimes, but you have to do it to get bit. So most of the time I'm finesse fishing, I'm using spinning gear. Uh, this is one of my favorite setups here. This is a Daiwa Tatula spinning reel. And then I just got a little drop shot weight on here and a Kitech Easy Shaker, four and a half inch. So this is a real natural looking presentation. Um, I got eight pound test monofilament here, and this is like a smoke green. Um, you can use fluorocarbon, or uh, I like to use braid too, and just use like a fluorocarbon or a clear or like a dark green monofilament leader. But I'm gonna show you some of my favorite finesse baits. Uh, these are baits I'm throwing when nothing else is working, when you really need to get a bite. A lot of these are pretty small or ha don't have a whole lot of action. And in general, when you're throwing finesse baits, you want to throw something that is natural colors. So like some of these are watermelon red, melon candy, pumpkin pepper green, uh, Cali Craw with gold flake, uh, bluegill flash, ghillie suit, that's an interesting one, watermelon candy, uh, these ones are actually black and purple. It's a little bit unnatural looking, but it's uh, still a good finesse bait. So I'm going to go over some of them with you. Uh, let's see. I'll start from, let's just start at tubes. So these are yum tubes. Um, I've caught untold numbers of bass on these things. Uh, even in my intro, I say when the bite gets tough, this is a bait I'm always throwing. You can't beat this. Uh, three or four inch tube. Um, I have some three inch get sits also. Just a natural color there for like sm small mouth downsizing. These are great also. Uh, but a tube is one of my favorites just because they have quite moderate action. Um, you can do a lot of things with them. You can crawl them on the bottom and it kind of looks like a crayfish here or some kind of minnow laying on the bottom. Um, you can let them fall and just pop it off the bottom. And when they fall, they have kind of like a spiraling dying bait fish fall. And then you can pop it back up and it'll spiral down again. Um, you can do just short pops or crawls on the bottom. Or you can uh, fish it a little bit faster, just like cast out with a lighter weight, let it sink a couple feet, and then just kind of twitch it and swim it back into you. Oh, that's probably my favorite way to fish it because I hate fishing painfully slow, especially if you really don't know. You're fishing a lake that doesn't have any unique structure. You're not targeting like one big rock or one drop off or anything. You're kind of targeting like a flat or something and you don't have time to methodically break it down. That's what I like to do, just slowly swim it. So this is a good one to imitate like crayfish or bait fish. Watermelon candy, I like a little bit more for lakes. This one's a little bit more for rivers, but really, I don't think it makes much of a difference. Both of them are excellent. Next up would be a Bad Mama. This is a yum bait. I haven't opened this pack yet, but I'll open it for you guys. So this one's a pretty similar to a tube in action and a lot of things you can do with it. Uh, so you can break these apart here. I'm just gonna break that and then it's got a little bit more action. Still, these flap a little bit, but still not really that much of like a crazy action to it. They're moving around a little bit. Um, these ones you can swim, but I really like the tube for swimming better. These ones are more I, I like for dragging or even jig trailers. These make really good jig trailers. Or throwing these weightless up in uh, lily pads or cover and just letting them sink slowly and just pulling on, on top of that cover, on top of those lily, lily pads and letting them fall through. I really like this one. Again, this is a natural color, watermelon candy. So it's a natural looking bait. Maybe imitates like a frog if you're fishing it towards the top or a crayfish if you're fishing on bottom or some kind of a bait fish or whatever the hell bass think it is. I don't know. They really like it though. 
Um, next up, these smaller baits. This is the one I was talking about that's not a super natural color, but I don't know, black and purple. Black's a fairly natural color, and I really like that color. So this is a Zoom Z-Craw. So it's basically like a ribbed body here with a couple of craw appendages. Similar to that bad mama. Um, you can swim this, like I said, these claws here have kind of little flanges on them, so they'll kind of pulse back and forth a little bit. Um, a decent chatterbait trailer here, or a swim jig trailer, or anything like that, or just a normal jig you're working on the bottom, that's a good trailer. Um, this one and the tube and the bad mama are really not that terribly much different. You can kind of fish them all in a similar way. Uh, like I said though, I'd like the tube for like a swimming action a little bit better. This one for dragging on the bottom, popping off the bottom. Jig trailer, chatterbait trailer, that one works great. Uh, let's see, next up I will do the Kytec Easy Shiner, so it's a four inch. Now this one, uh, you can drag off the bottom, like put uh, just on a nose weighted hook there, or tex maybe a small Texas rig or like a shaky head or something like that, and just pull it on the bottom, kind of swimming like that. Um, I really like actually fishing it swimming, so it just kind of pulls and then let it fall, pulls and let it fall. Um, it doesn't spiral down like the tube does, but uh, it's a really natural color also on this one. Um, but this is a good chatterbait trailer also if you're throwing a little bit smaller chatterbait or for drop shotting this one works pretty well um, a lot of times for drop shotting i don't like to use a paddle tail but if they're hitting it pretty good that paddle tail can make the difference uh, next up let's do straight tail worms uh, this is a gary yamamoto daiwa concept one and this is a yum finesse worm. So pretty similar worms. A skinny worm, no curly tail or anything like that. It's just a straight tail. So not a lot of action to these guys. Um, these ones I like to fish on a shaky head. Just pull them along the bottom here. And just kind of like pull or crawl it on the bottom or twitch it on the bottom. Just have it swim. Uh, it does work pretty well for a weightless worm too if you're throwing it in cover or something like that. But where this one really shines is like on a shaky head. Uh, but just dragging it along the bottom or maybe like hopping it along the bottom. And then something you all are probably familiar with. This is a Yum Dinger. It's like one of those cigar baits similar to uh, Gary Yamamoto Senko. These ones are quite a bit cheaper though. And uh, just a good natural color. Cali craw with flakes. Well, it's basically watermelon candy also. Um, I like doing this one wacky rigged. Like people are usually used to seeing, bringing it in sideways like this. It has kind of like that kicking swimming action and then let it sit and fall. Uh, either weightless or with a weighted wacky rig hook. I really like the weighted wacky rig hook to get it deeper because generally when you're finesse fishing you're not fishing that shallow you want it to get down five or six feet or more so that's usually what i like throwing that one on then something like a ned rig which is kind of like the craze over the last year in finesse fishing i like using these uh, bass pro shop stickos so this is just like a three inch uh ned rig type of Senko. You could also fish this one wacky, but this one works good just straight. Straight, pulling it along the bottom, giving it pops, or even kind of swimming it in if the fish are aggressive. Uh, this is a good way to put fish in the boat. It's tiny. You definitely catch numbers with this one. You catch bass that you didn't know there was bass that small in the lake. You may also catch sunnies or crappies on that, so that's kind of a nice bonus. And then last up for my finesse baits, um, I got a little Helgramite. So this thing is awesome looking. This has all these little appendages here. Um, no tail or anything like that, so you ba it basically just comes in straight and these appendages move a little bit. But really, if you've ever seen a Helgramite in the river, this thing looks quite a bit like them. And I like just throwing this one on like a Ned head, just basically working it the same as a Ned rig, kind of slowly swimming it in, popping it off the bottom. 
And for Rivers, this thing is hard to beat. And those smallies aren't eating very much, throw that little Helga mite in front of them and that's tough for them to turn down. So those are some of my favorite finesse baits. Um, I really don't finesse fish all that much. I really like power fishing, but a lot of times you do have to slow down when the bite is tough. Especially when you have a job like me, I bartend, so most of my hours are at night. I'm working till 1 a.m. and probably not getting to bed until 2 a.m. at least three nights a week. So waking up in the morning for that really good reaction bite is not always possible. And a lot of times I'm fishing off a stand-up paddleboard or a kayak. Oops, show you that. Fishing out of a kayak or a stand-up paddleboard, or sometimes in the canoe, depending on the situation. So Finesse fishing kind of sucks to do on them. I mean, the wind takes you around so far, but if, if it's calm day or you pack an anchor, bring some of those finesse baits and you'll see it'll change your day. I mean, you can bring those chatter baits or top water baits or whatever, you can get those fun strikes. But once you've worked an area over with those moving baits, work it over again with these finesse baits and I guarantee you to catch a few more fish that you wouldn't have caught otherwise. And sometimes the biggest fish I've ever caught have came on the finesse baits after I've worked even big swim baits, chatter baits, topwater baits, whatever, fishing those reaction baits and you maybe get three or four nice fish, you catch like a 17 or 18 inch bass, you're like, yes, what a good day. Then you work over it again with these finesse baits and you get even bigger ones sometimes. So definitely don't overlook these. I know they're not that fun to throw. I know it's not exciting. I know sometimes it's a pain, especially if you're fishing on a kayak or a stand-up paddleboard like me, and the wind's blowing you around and you're trying to fish slow and before you know it, you're blowing past your bait. Bring an anchor out or find the calm side of the lake and give these a try, you won't regret it. Hope you learned something from this. Hopefully you picked up a couple new baits you can try. Once again, thanks for watching guys. I appreciate the support, the views, and I'll see you next time.